y'all, it's your girl, Lady Luck, and I'm here with the homie, Big Wall, and you are now tuned in to Address the Culture, where we're addressing everything in the culture. Keep it locked. Dressing the culture. I'm addressing the culture, huh? Yeah. Addressing the culture. I'm addressing the culture, huh? Yeah. Addressing the culture. I'm addressing the culture, huh? Yeah. Addressing the culture. I'm addressing the culture. We gon' talk about it. Come address the culture. We gon' talk about it. Come address the culture. We gon' talk about it. Brick by brick, this is Address the Culture. Big Wall's not here, but he's here in spirit. But this is Peace Doc, and we got another great Address the Culture show tonight. Hey, we have the Legacy 9 wrap-up. Great event. You know, if you've been watching Address the Culture and following, you know, we've been doing the Legacy events. You know, we have all these great FMA and martial artists come on the show and talk about the background, and they make appearances. Grandmaster Darren Tabon's here to lead us on through it, you know, like he has been. You know, so Legacy 9 was the event this past September in Las Vegas. Another great event. Something that. So that's how they do it. So we got a great wrap-up show for that tonight, leading on to the next season of the FMA Artists and what's coming on forward, what's coming up next. Big shout-out to Aladdin 19 Big wall and everything going on. This is a, a address to culture, and we do have brother Darren T. Bond in the house. What's going on, D? You know, long time no see, but we here. It's long back. Time it's see, bro. But uh, it's always good to come on this show. And uh, I have four guys that I've connected with. I think two might be having some problems that are getting in right now. But uh, we have mm -hmm. uh, Master Jared Perciato. Uh, Able to get in, and we got Sifu Herringer Saints Sarba Wall. He's there. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully, Professor Hoonden and Falaka Namaho you know, end up getting in this show. But hey, mm -hmm. this is great right here. And uh, first of all, mm -hmm. Peace Thought, it's good to see you again, brother. It's been a while. And yeah. uh, we've, had some, we've had some really amazing shows, you know, what shows mm -hmm. we did, you know, film. But the Icon mm -hmm. show was the last. And wow, that was an amazing show. Yeah, that Icon show was incredible. It, you know, that was a, that was a couple great series of shows that you put together and brought forward, and that was great. Yeah, but you know uh, what we did September second, twenty twenty two, Legacy Las Vegas nine was fantastic, and uh, we have a couple of the the headliners here on the show, and we're going to talk about that. And, uh, and we're hoping for a great Legacy 10, too, that's scheduled for September 2nd of this year. And uh, we're just uh, going to pick and choose what location that we will have this event on, and then we're going to get it out there. But, yeah, I'm happy to have uh, Jerry Persiano and Aaron Racine on the show today. And yeah, that's it's been big. Good. It's been a long time, a couple of months, you know, since we yeah. got to uh, got the show. In the yeah. show. So I'm happy yeah. for it. And both been on the show that they that you know they're not new, especially Heron their seafood has been on a few times. And yeah. definitely check him out on the Black Belt <laughs> podcast. You know, hit him up. You know, seafood Heron, he be doing some big things over there at the Black Belt Podcast. So hit him up over there. Tap okay. in, follow him, subscribe, everything you're supposed to do. You know it. But what's happening, fellas? You know, the Legacy Nine event this September went off big, you know. Uh, 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 Sifu here I know you've been you've been participating uh, pretty regular in the event, uh, Master Jerry. How about you? Was this your first one in a while, or was this your first one, or what's going on? Yeah, it, it, it's been a while. It was it was been the first one um, to be able to attend. You know, down in Las Vegas, it was it was really a, yeah. it was a good show. It was surprising just for to walk in the you know walk in there and not expecting as many people down there as uh, that was attending and uh, really, really some great, great, respectable. Uh, I, I can't really call them students because they're all uh, trained in some form of martial arts. So um, they're really good, uh, good people. Um, the, 
See, back back when we first back when we first fired up the legacy, you know, running the tournament, I had started doing legacy seminars, and I know Jerry was in a couple of them, you know, before filming with that one really started. And we were having a blast running tournaments, uh, you know, Disney, uh, Stockton Legacy. Uh, we were doing Long Beach Internationals, and Jerry was a big part of that team, you know, helping that all through the group, too. But, you know, we had so much fun way back in the beginning what led up to all of these legacies, you know. And Jerry got to see the beginning of that full board, you know, six years, seven years of tournaments. But, you know... Here we are, man, and uh, I'm expecting to see Jerry at the next Legacy, Legacy 10, and I hope we'll see Sipo here at the next Legacy 10, and uh, we got a whole bunch of great guys, you know, uh, mm -hmm. I got to make that list, man, that's one of the hardest lists to make, you know, yeah. But, uh, yeah. it's going yeah. to be fantastic, I guarantee you see that. Yeah, so, you know? some of those lineups, the lineups have been great, and this year with Vegas, he was able to add the healers as well, which is even bigger to, to add yeah. to the whole event. And we're all waiting for Herender to pop up in a movie. I'm waiting to see the movies come out, Herender. What's happening? <laughs> but, you, know, you know, guys, uh, two weekends ago, I attended uh, Taipo Telesaga, a very good friend of mine's funeral. Mm. And this funeral, what happened is all the heads of Rua, all the heads of Lima Lama and some of the top heads of uh, even Ed Parker Campo showed up. So it gave me an opportunity to meet a lot of not only just the martial art aspect, but the royal bloodline of Samoa and Hawaii attended mm. his mm. funeral. And it, even Michelle Mani showed up, okay? Everybody mm. was there. Uh, people that I only really see at all the Masters Hall of Fames attended, but it's given me an opportunity to talk to a lot of these people and a lot of these people want to come on this show. So these are people that I'm currently talking with too. And I'm trying to organize with that show too. Uh, you know, a fabulous lineage of the Lima Lama under the late, uh, you know, Tilda Saga, you know, mm -hmm. amazing people. Uh, Palaka Nama Hoy's whole connection of the Hawaiian martial arts of what he's been connected to his entire life, you know, but in talking to people that I've been really good friends with, like Tasi Alam and uh, John Talfava, Tal you know, all cousins to, you know, Kaipo uh, Tolosaka. But, you know, even John Talfava even told me, he was, you know, Daniel Samoa, I'm a high prince. So a lot of these Lima Lama martial artists, Hawaiian martial artists, they go back to royalty in Samoa and Hawaii. And this is why I want to create this show so uh, they could talk about this, talk about the history of the martial arts. Mm -hmm. And uh, that would be amazing, you know, to have the opportunity to listen to the descendants, the top teachers of all these systems, talk about not only the martial arts, but where it's connected in the Hawaiian and Samoan royalty, mm -hmm. okay? And I think they make out for a fabulous show, too. So look forward to that show, Keystar. And uh, let's see if we can create that opportunity to make this happen. That's a great show to have, you know. Yes. Uh, when, when you talk about that, like like when we had uh, uh, a Sifu uh, Steve on, you know, Muhammad. Mm -hmm. And he was yeah. talking about his history. That story was amazing when he was talking about he was driving down the street and he decided he was going into this school and he wanted to take real karate and the yeah. martial arts and he went to the school and it was Ad Parker's school. Yes. And he said his first teacher was Danny Anasato. I'm like, yes. and, and, and yeah. I was like, wow, you know, so to see yeah. that going back. And he, said, that 19, he said that was 1964. Yeah. On that Kaipo funeral, and I, I'm looking at a guy, man, I've seen that guy someplace before. Where did I see him? And come to find out, this guy been on Magnum PI, okay, mm -hmm. Hawaiian Five O, and he's just got one of those recognizable faces. You know, the guy played in many movies, and he's in you know uh, security too. Got security, and he's a musician. 
So, mm -hmm. you know, all of these musicians that are martial artists all got together at Kaipo's funeral and they had a band up on stage and they started jamming Hawaiian music. Mm -hmm. It was amazing, literally amazing. But uh, the people who attended, like, Hawaiian royalty, bro, Samoa, mm -hmm. make Dad, that show happen. Make, yeah. make that show happen. I mean, we've all been on, you know, Paso. I, make, I met some really phenomenal people. Man. Mm -hmm. It was it, it was mind blowing. It was sad, but then mind blowing and overwhelming at the same time. You know, mm -hmm. uh, to attend my friends feel like that. Mm -hmm. But yet the people that came in, you know, to pay respect, like you know, he come from a family of like eleven brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. and I got to meet all of them too, and uh, all the people that came, you know, in honor of Lima Lama, you know, Marty uh, Lua, and. Uh, mm -hmm. So it was a fantastic meeting. It, it, it was not only a funeral, but a gathering of all that Hawaiian martial arts all in one place. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was mind blowing. It really was. But I got to meet people and talk with people like I'd never really got to talk to them. You know, bro, I, I think I've done six or seven inductions to the Master Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. I'm hosting my people, but when I look around, I see friends. Hey, how you doing? Quick handshakes, and then I go back to my people. Mm -hmm. Aaron, you've been to the Masters Hall of Fame. You've seen how big it is, and all the different martial artists everywhere. Well, you meet people, but a lot of times you really, really don't get to sit down and talk to them. Mm -hmm. This show is giving me an opportunity to really talk to people, and that's what I love about this show. You know, mm -hmm. I've seen see you'll see Muhammad at Hall of Fame. I mm -hmm. think I've even seen uh, Jim Ron Van Cleef and other possible at home things. But when you're an ambassador and hosting the people that you inducted, you stay amongst your table, you know, mm -hmm. and everybody starts talking. But then it doesn't give an ambassador time to go out and mingle and talk to all the other people. This show has changed that. It mm -hmm. has for me. There's a lot of people I'm glad. that I think I'm glad. I'm glad. And that's what the show is for the platform to address the culture for yes. everybody. You know, yeah. I mean, that we're, we're everybody, everybody on this panel, everybody, you know, that comes through these shows was great. I enjoy them. I enjoy meeting you guys. You know, I see you guys on, 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 on social media and on internet and everything doing stuff and then to come on the show and talk to you is great you know what I mean and that's good because I'm going to share that with people that might not otherwise know who you are or what you do or anything about that culture that's what my job is my mission is to take that culture whatever it is whatever Herinder, the Black Belt Magazine check this out I talk there's a lot of guys I, I, I believe it a lot of guys that, that want to, you know, they, they study, they try to study martial arts in some form at this time. And I tell them, check out this show, check out these people. They're online. You know, you can reach out to these guys and get video one-on-one -on -one sessions and sessions and everything else, workshops, you know, virtual workshops, and maybe catch them near you. And, and, and that's what I do. I like to direct people to that. Yeah. Direct people that go check this out. that one guy was bugging me a lot a long time uh, about you, Herringer. He said he seen he seen you on I think Black Belt uh, magazine cover, and, and he's into you know in the martial arts. And the guy he's an IT guy, you know, and he grew up and he was like, man, he said I, I told him about the platform. He was watching. He's seen you on there. He says, I know that guy. I kept saying, well, what guy you was talking about? I can't think of his name, but you know, he's bald head, right? And I'm thinking, who else? I said, that guy's hair. In there. I'm like, yeah. He says, yeah. He said, I think I seen him in the movie, but he's on Black Belt Magazine. And he was like, yeah, I seen it. So what shows? So he was asking me specifically the shows so I can send them back to check the shows and told him he has Black Belt Magazine. I gave him, you know, told him your name, said, follow him on Facebook. And go from there, and then you link up everywhere else. So that's what I do. I direct people to, to the Facebooks to follow. Listen, so to extend the culture. So that's what the platform, Address the Culture, is meant to be. 
and, and I'm glad you can come on and talk about it. For sure, man. It's, you know, a, it's a great yeah. honor. No, it's oh, yeah, a great bro. honor to be here. Uh, sorry, sorry, because you know, it's a great honor to be here as always. Uh, Peace Talk, Grandmaster Darren Tabone. You know, you guys, um, I think it's such an important thing to sit down and talk about. You know, like 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 uh, GM Tabone, you were saying earlier, you, you meet people in seminars and things, and maybe you get a chance to learn from them. But when you get a chance to sit down and talk to somebody and you get a chance to hear their story a little bit and you get a chance to hear um, the intentions, the training, the things they went through, and you realize how much more we're, we're so alike in the things that we do, that, that there's a unique community. You know, we have this community of, of martial artists all around the world and many different styles, systems. Even here, one of the best things about Legacy that – um, Grandmaster Tabone has put together, and it was great meeting uh, Master Perciado. Is you get to see so many people that are so accomplished that have been around for a long time, from the OGs to the newcomers, and it's it's really phenomenal and becomes very motivational because you realize that the impact that martial arts has, uh, not only on your um, self confidence and how you present yourself and how you face the world, because it's not just about what's on the mats or what's happening like uh um in training it's it transcends right so as a martial artist you're it's not a hobby it's a lifestyle and you get to meet other people that are like that because at the end of the day we're in the empowerment business and i think the show that you guys have been doing i've heard a bunch of episodes it's, it's really empowering and motivating because you get to hear stories and people share their experiences it makes them more human and it makes you understand that hey oh man I I I go through that I I, I realize that oh it's it's it builds a community to another level and and in this day and age that we're living in we need that community more than ever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the, the spurring out more, more collaborations and and the growth of the arts. You know, I mean, because Yunz guys, Yunz guys on this panel right now, Yunz guys are the tie-in to the New Jacks. To the old school, you know. That, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that's y'all. Uh, that that's y'all job, y'all responsibility. And I'm just glad that address the culture and I hip hop TV and everything can come in and be a part of it. No, you know that's big. You know, uh, about a week uh, prior to or Christmas, it was uh, Master uh, GM Sultano Dean, Jerry Prudencia. Gabriel Assumption and myself, we all had a gathering up in San Francisco. And, you know, when I started training under the late Grandmaster Angel Cabalas, all these guys were there, you know. These were the seniors when I came in, and they were the guys that I chiseled my training with. So, you know, all of us coming back from 32 years ago, me and Jerry, you know, we've been around together. He's co-founder of Daily Disciples. I got to see Jerry a lot, but to bring in Master Gabriel Asuncion and then have Sultani Dean, who's been in two legacies now, all us four together, you know, once looking at each other, maybe 20, mid-20s, you know, and now we're all 60 and up. So, you know, to still have that brotherhood, that closeness, and see each other and get the smile. Say, hey, man, we're still alive for one, you know. Hey, none of us getting younger. Mm-hmm. But to watch each other get to work out with other students that were there that came and all of us sharing, you know, what, what we do, how we do it, it was amazing. We had a fabulous time. But, you know, it time flies by fast. And guys that you knew when you were young, young, young. And then to see each other, you know, all these years later. And uh, get to get on the floor and share. Bro, I'm addicted to that. I love that. So, you know, I, I want to bring in all these Serrata brothers that I came up with. Stay true to the late Grandmaster Angel Cabalas. And uh, I want to work with I want to provide opportunities for all of us to you know, get on the floor and share. Because, you know, you, you, you can have five guys that learn one art. The fundamentals are going to match. They always do. 
But mm -hmm. the advanced concept, somebody has something that they favor in time. But mm -hmm. to have that brought out from each and every master who trained under Angel Kabbalah, that's a very unique opportunity for people to, to have access to. So I, I really want to open this up, you know, uh, with the Serata Masters under the Lake Grandmaster Sergeant El Cabalas. And I believe Legacy 10 will be one of the focal points of that opportunity. Because I'm going to bring us four together, bro. I want it. And I want to see this happen. Brother Sultan Dean, Master Preciado, Master Gabriel Sanchez, and me all in one room. You know, we can split a half hour. But mm -hmm. it's the knowledge that was obtained, all the mere fact of what it is today and how we represent it, the flavor of it. I want to give people the opportunity to experience that. And that's something else that I'm working on to do. So look forward to that, Jen. Let's look forward to that. That's big. We looks like we got we got Dr. Hunden trying to come in here. Is he down there, Jen? Can you hear us? Okay. Yes, sir. Like, we can't see you though. You got to turn yeah. the camera on. Let's oh my God. Let, me see. let me see here. You got to get the camera in there. Let's let's see you. What's up, fellas? AC fool. Hey, What's Jerry? good? What's good? Hey, how, you how you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. You know, I'm a, this this technical stuff. You know, I'm not good at so. <laughs> so. <laughs> Come on, bro. You've yeah, been on a couple yeah. shows. You can get Let it. me see. You got to turn that camera on. You. That's all. It looks like it looks like you got the. Uh, I don't know. Hard to say. Is it the shutter. The shutter shouldn't even. That shouldn't affect. Oh wait a minute. Let's see. Oh wait, 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 wait. Yeah, there you go. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, that is oh. <laughs> <laughs> you had to put it down. That's all. Oh, man. That's a good one. Oh, oh it's gosh. so great yeah. seeing everybody. Oh, it's good oh, to see you too. Right there. Yeah, you do. Yeah, that's a good one. That, that's a good intro right there. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, Legacy Las Vegas and I was a blast. It was a blast until you walked outside. Ooh, it yeah. was hot. <laughs> oh, you melted. Melting weather, right? <laughs> September. I, I'm surprised. Well, Vegas, September, the end of, that's still summer, I guess. You know, it's not quite. It was, 116, it was 116 degrees driving home, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was hot. <laughs> wow. I was saying to myself, don't get a flat tire because you will die of heat exhaustion <laughs> trying to change that tire. Don't stop. <laughs> uh -huh. uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. Right. Uh -huh. Right. You're right. But yeah, that's great. You know, Professor Hunden as well has been a he's been on the show uh, a couple times. It, it, it's, it's no mistake and and his uh legacy that he established and going forward through that he brings to the legacy nine event you know uh this legacy nine event professor Hunter, what did you carry away from that as well as uh, everyone else was the the, com the camaraderie with everyone you know i i mean it, everyone was so so open and willing to share and supportive and uh you know, just working together as a family, as a team, it, it was great. It was an awesome experience, and I had a blast. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's big. That's big, you know. So, I mean, you should have brought the band and did a performance there. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> man, you should be getting down. You should be standing. You should be getting down. <laughs> you know, for those who don't know, but everybody on the panel knows, I'm sure. Yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. I introduced Professor Hunden. Dang, sweet Miss Hunden. <laughs> <laughs> it was just um, awesome. Man, we all man. get together, man. We had a blast, man. Yeah, we did. I tell you, the only thing that the, the whole thing that thirty minute time frame uh, that that was just a little bit too fast. I mean, it seemed like by yeah. the time you stood up, you did two things, you sit back down again. That thirty minutes was more like about a three minute process. They <laughs> 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 need more time, huh? Yeah, That's it. but you know what? We finished right on time as usual. You know, I'm 
by clockwork, guys. You know, when I coordinate it, man, I got to keep time of everything. I got to put guys on deck. It finished right on time. Actually, yeah. 35 minutes early. So, the event was beautiful. Yeah, and I, I, yeah, and I think on the next one, yeah, yeah, I think on next one uh, if I was, uh, I'll, I will attend, but I, I'm pretty sure I would eliminate a lot of the basics and go uh, pretty much more into the advanced stage um, so that yeah. um, they can get a little bit more out of it. I think some of that, a lot of them are already trained in the basic side of it. And just to give them, uh, everybody, something to take back from what yeah. we did when we were coming up, not the basics, mm -hmm. but let's go a little bit into it. Um, a little more aggressive, I would say. So mm -hmm. yeah. be prepared for that on the next next event. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's it, man. That, that's big. Well, pretty soon the growth, if the growth keeps going, the event could turn into a two day event. You know, it's going to be getting bigger where you could yeah. spread it out a little more and have yeah. sections and maybe a bigger venue. Depends on what you want. If you want to go a certain style or whatever system, go I'll over here. I'll tell you the problem. Time, you I'll know, tell you the, the problem with that. Mm -hmm. You're going to lose the first wave. A lot of people. When, when they attend a big event like this, I noticed they plan it out amongst family mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. they want to hit attractions or whatever area that, that we host. Yeah. They, if, if we're going to host in SoCal this year, right? Mm -hmm. September 2nd is still the day. Mm -hmm. People want to work around that to take their families to, let's say, Universal Studios or Disney or something else. But, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I thought about it several times to go two days, but you talk mm -hmm. about a long event. That's a long event. Man. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, I get that too. Mm -hmm. To to take that chance of let's say half the people stay the next day, and then you got 20, let's say twenty four headliners. It's not fair sometimes for that second day because it's a Sunday. A lot and, of people uh, roll. Yeah, a lot of people, stay. man. They might not want to stick around, you know, and how they schedule the flight and everything else. So I've mm -hmm. stayed with one day all these years because of that. Maybe one day I might change that. But mm -hmm. uh, we're coming up on 10, and it's worked out one day, you know. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 25 yeah. minutes does fly by, 30 minutes flies by. I agree. Mm -hmm. Well, you could show a lot in oh, that yeah. 25 minutes. Yeah. Look at yeah, look yeah. at Sifu Heron and look at uh, Professor Hooded, what they went through, and mm -hmm. what I could go through with those you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, I've heard it, I've heard it, mm -hmm. I've thought about it, but two days, ooh, you talk about a day, man. Mm -hmm. That's a long, long day right there, bro. Two, two long I'll days. Right? Problem, I tell you the problem I will have if I try to host for two days. Fifty mm percent -hmm. are gonna fight for the first day. Whoever I host, I guarantee you're going to fight for that first day. It's a guarantee. I almost guarantee it. And then it'll become trying to host people on the second day. Ah, shit. He put me on the second day. I'd rather yeah. not hear that. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just want to run it. Everybody mm -hmm. on the same day. Boom. We hit it. We have a blast. And we get out. Uh, two days. You know, I'm going to have that problem. I already have a problem. People, go, well, what order do you have in? I got you eight. Eight. Eight, eight. yeah. <laughs> you Bro, could do I it like, like that. Every legacy. Every legacy. You could do it like <laughs> we used to do in music when doing events when we yeah. were setting up uh, uh, Philly Blaze and all that. Give them tickets. Yeah. Your, your, your position is by how many tickets you can sell. You know, if you can yeah. sell two, you're first. You get to open yeah. up for the, for the uh, staff, you know, or you know, the wanderers through and then move yeah. up. That's that's what they used to do for some of them events, you know. I am I mean, open for suggestions good. on this part, but already hosting, getting ready to host 10, mm -hmm. you know, it's worked. And most of all, it's worked for Val Magellan. Can you imagine Val having to film two days back to back? With Val, yeah. even one film two days back to back. That's tough, yeah. man. That's yeah, tough that to ask from a film, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
But now if uh, Boodle Brothers showed up and they took the second day, that'd be a whole different story. You know? <laughs> the Boodles of <laughs> Canada, Canada's still playing tricks on them. So, so they're not it's even going to try trick. to... They're not even going like to try to come down. ain't thinking about it. I'm thinking no, about it. <laughs> they're not going to try to come down. But, but that's great. But there was something... I wanted to I wanted to bring up that I'd seen maybe uh, yesterday, uh, if I think maybe today, in the Philippines, they had opened up the full contact stick fighting leagues or whatever yeah. you know, with the, it looked like they have cage helmets like almost like the uh, not fencing helmets but you know the uh, the, uh, the samurai helmets whenever you be practicing they got the same type of headgear and everything but open. How do you feel about that? You know, they're trying to bring that up into the mainstream and push it like UFC, I, I, MMA, and leagues. We, we had a show about that with Apollo Lazy. Well. Yeah. Apollo Andre, Shakira, and Akala, they're moving in their direction for Olympic. You know, uh, there's mm -hmm. several different, one of the oldest uh, is Week F, and they're still active doing their thing. You know, uh, Felix Royalist was out there. And he took he took first place in that. His whole squad, his team took it. And uh, yeah, you know, there's so many different uh, FMA organizations offering tournaments. And WeKev got one of the biggest names out there. But there's also a lot of other uh, tournament circuits with Apollo Madres and Shimon Akala, and they're doing a phenomenal job too. So mm -hmm. you know, it's there's just not one stick fighting organization for international. They're all over the world now today. Okay, they're everywhere, all over the world. But it's the one that brings, I believe, the most notoriety, you know, and has the biggest press for the winners and fighters. I think that's what creates more people who want to come to something of uh, the notoriety of the win. You know, what tournament, it's not just what tournament you fight in today. It's the exposure of that tournament that really creates the value of that tournament. And, you know, I'm willing to support you know, several tournaments out there. But when you go watch some of these tournaments, these same rules were 30 years old. And instead of growing, it's like they stayed stagnant from rules 30 years ago. And they, they just limit the athletes' uh, fighting abilities. Mm. They cut it down to basically four angles and two avenues. You know, mm. when I ran USFMAF, you know, Jerry was part of that team. We allowed thrusting to the body. Had a weapon, we allowed thrusting to the face. Of course, it was waist on love, but target areas were uh, knees and below. Waste and bug with thrusting. Now I don't see too too many tournaments doing that, even with Pat Weapon Day. So if I'm going to build a team of fighters, and I tell I ask my chapters, "Hey man, you want to get your teams to go hit this tournament?" I'm analyzing all the various tournaments available out there, and there really ain't too many that fit what we did with USFMAF, with Disney, Stockton Legacy, and the Long Beach Internationals. Mm -hmm. And people loved our tournaments, and it lived almost seven years. So until I find something as good as what we built with USFMAF, I'm still not really seeing a whole lot of good FMA tournaments out there for me to ask my chapters, to, hey, man, let's hit this tournament. Mm. I have not seen one yet. So, mm. you know, maybe my standardization is a little bit different. But if you got a padded weapon in your hand, why can't you thrust with it? How are you going to hurt the guy with padded weapon thrusting? Mm. Okay. I allow thrusting with live stick, but we had a target area on the chest. So it was above the waist. It was right, right on the. Uh, Best that we should put on our fighters. If you get out of that area, you're automatically disqualified. Mm -hmm. If you intentionally get out of that area, automatically disqualified. Nobody got hurt in all the years we did it, right, Jerry? Nobody right. got hurt. Right. People complied with the rules, and they it made out for a fabulous tournament. I want to see something like that today. 
And I believe Brother Claudio was working on that. What is what is FMMA? But I think Claudio he was pushing for knockout with the stick, a padded weapon, but in knockout. Mm. Let me see if Claudio is going to follow up sort of like that, and then maybe uh, I can look him again. So you know, it's all the, the, the thrusting part. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's big. So it looks like that that was, you know, something that I could see it. I could, I could, when I seen the, the photo they had, I could visualize it yeah. being on mainstream TV. Yeah. I mean, right now you turn on your TV, you got XFL football. Yes. You know, uh, that those times like XFL, mm -hmm. then you're going to have USFL and XFL going. You know, so why couldn't those time slots, you know, you can get in some in some FMA or some more martial arts in those prime time slots on the weekends. You know what I mean? And replace of NFL games, direct yeah. the attention of some of them football uh, junkies into another sport and get them in there. You know, what do y'all say to that? It's all good, man. Uh, like I said, you know, first of all, how many organizations can you get to a tournament? You know, back when we were promoting USFMAO, we were on purpose boycotted from mm -hmm. various organizations that followed various tournament circuits. They would boycott us, you know. Uh, when I first did Legacy for Hawaii. Matter of fact, I was boycotted by the same organization. Mm. They were told to boycott Legacy 4. Well, a lot of guys crossed that picket line, bro, because they're men, and they said, hey, don't tell us what to do. We're going to do what we feel is good for us. Mm. And that's how I got so many different guys to come in Legacy 4. And legacy side, but uh, there's a lot of politics still out there. I understand it. I dealt with it. There is haters out there mm -hmm. within my own uh, art. So I just scream. I deal with it. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Something that just comes with trying to be professional in what we do. You're always going to have a hater out there on the field, and you just keep moving forward and doing what you do. Yeah, yeah, that's big. That's big, you know. I mean, yeah, I, th I think not only the, the boycott portion of it, but I, I remember showing up at tournaments and they'd see who we, we were bringing, and they wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't want to fight. They would actually uh, cancel, and uh, they wouldn't even go in there to compete. Yeah, <laughs> I think things came a long way, but you're always going to have that room for people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? try to politically ruin anything you're going through. I think that's human nature, especially in this day and age. You know? Mm -hmm. No matter how good you try, you won't have any haters, bro. I always tell you. Always like mm -hmm. It is what it is, man. Just keep being you. Keep moving forward. You know? Mm -hmm. And keep the best you can do. Mm -hmm. And love what you do. Mm -hmm. What about the, the the climate, the martial arts, like, like, like Herringer, You're in the L.A. area, right? You're in the L.A. Yes, sir. Everybody else, Professor Hunden, you're up in the Bay Area, correct? Yes. You're in the Bay Area, and Jerry and Darren are up north too. What what's the difference? Like like Herringer, is is there a big difference in the in the climate or the uh, atmosphere in the martial arts community in L.A. than it is in NorCal, Southern Cal versus NorCal? No, I don't think so. I mean, like, I, of course, there's different things depending. I think that comes down to where you're from, mm -hmm. your style, your lineage, what your teachers were like, you know, mm -hmm. that makes a big difference. And, mm -hmm. um, but I think if, if you take a look at Southern California, it's, it's like uh, we have martial artists from all over, the, all over the world. Some of the best martial mm -hmm. artists are here. Mm -hmm. You look at the Bay Area, you got some of the best martial arts in the world. So if you if you take a look at the history of let's say Chinese kung fu, Chinese kung fu, the the masters that brought it over, you know Bruce Lee gets a lot of credit, of course, you know because he made it super big. But 
there's so many different masters that brought all the Kung Fu arts. For example, San Francisco Chinatown is one of the mm-hmm. hotbeds of it all. And then you look at LA, you know, Guru Dan Asano, the Asano Academy, the Gracies, um, Ed Parker, Kempo. So the Filipino martial arts like Stockton. So to me personally, I think California is, I'm going to go out and say it. I've said it before, but I personally believe like California is probably one of the ultimate locations for martial arts in the world because we have people from all over the world and we had people from many different cultures come I to believe. California and they were brought here as workers, right? So the I Chinese, believe. the Filipinos, uh, the Gracies, like so many people came over here. Korean um, town. You even got Korean town. town right? Like Japan town, yeah. the Japanese. Japanese. And so you had, you had so many different martial artists come over here there and then of course you've got hollywood over here so Mm -hmm. the best you know that wanted to go into film and stuff like that Mm -hmm. they they gravitate towards hollywood right and the tv shows and things that are like of that nature Mm -hmm. but i think in general you know you don't need to go to other parts of the world anymore you can just come to california and you'll find the best masters that you could find all in one state. You could drive up and down the state. You start in San Francisco with Professor Hunden, hit hit Stockton on the way down and come to Southern California and you can get a taste of every different kind of art. Also, let's not forget MMA. Mm-hmm. If you look at MMA's development up in the Bay Area with regards to strike force and uh, it's the home of Bellator and stuff like that. And I mean, it, it's truly, I think, one of the greatest um places where martial arts is developed, where it's come together from a traditional perspective, a street fighting perspective, a sport combat perspective. But going back to your earlier question, as Grandmaster Darren Tabone was talking about also, is that, um, you know, in martial arts, sometimes you, we get caught up in politics and things of that nature, and people get caught up in ways of doing things that um, are generational and they're passed down generationally. And I think that we're living in a time where, I mean, you, you can see it with the legacy event. Um, Grandmaster Darren Tabone has brought together people from all different styles and systems that uh, in, in FMA and then other styles as well. But you would never have seen something like that happen like 20, 30 years ago. It wouldn't happen. And then now we're bringing together different Sharada masters. And I think at the end of the day, we live in the greatest era of martial arts because we have access. We have access to teachers. We have access to videos. I mean, if you look at mm-hmm. the series that Professor Hunden's put out and Grandmaster Darren Tabone's put out, you have access to information. So if you're a seeker of knowledge, that's mm-hmm. what martial arts means about. I love it, man. It's about knowledge, about learning. I'm a student for life. You know what I'm saying? White belt forever, mm-hmm. yo. The more, the more I learn, I'll tell you, Peace Talk, the more I learn, the more I realize how much shit I don't know. You know, yeah. that's, it yeah. just you just yeah. keep growing because if you're not growing, what's the point? You play basketball at a certain age, you can't play basketball anymore. Not mm-hmm. in martial arts. It doesn't you keep work that going. Way. No, you keep going. Right. You can keep growing, and then when you get a chance to see people from different styles come together, man, you could sit back and be like, oh, you know, my thing's better, or you could sit back and be like, oh, I like that. Yeah, like when he put his hand over there. Yeah. I like the way he presented that over there. Damn yeah. shit! I like that move over there. I didn't. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was doing it this way, but that's a different flair. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, they they said the, the funny thing they said about Bruce Lee, right? Was that if you steal from one person, they call you a thief, right? Mm-hmm. You steal from seven people and you put it together, they call you an innovator. I mean, <laughs> 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 if you listen to borrow. I mean, you know, I mean. At the end of the day, yeah. That's martial art, though, right? Like, and if we're not experimenting and we're not growing, what's the point? What's the point? I mean, what, what, you know what I'm saying? What, what's the point about it? It's like, oh, I was a master 30 years ago, and then you're not growing anymore. What happened? Right? Yeah. So, yeah. so that, that's the beauty of it, you know? So I think the growth, constant growth. growth. Constant but growth. But you got to be around people that are promoting growth. Yeah. You got to be yeah. around people that are open to be sharing and, and avenues mm-hmm. to share so people can come up and share in a safe environment mm-hmm. where, you know, you can, mm-hmm. you, you know, everybody's like down to get down, but they're also down to grow together. And that's the difference, right? Because there's a mutual respect. And I yes. That's yes. really beautiful when that can happen. That's yeah. big. That's big. So, yeah, it's one of my biggest experiences with the legacy. Yeah. 
bringing everybody together to share, mm. you know, and, and, and to watch everybody, you know, uh, their flavor, what their teacher gave them, what he focused on. That's beautiful to witness, you know, I mean, you, you look at a lot of these old teachers of where they came from that say, out of the Philippines to Hawaii, Hawaii to here. And then you see how martial artists might have changed the arts because they might have been living in East LA. They might have been living in East Stockholm mm -hmm. or Honolulu, you know. And a lot of people changed, I believe, their arts to work for the environment they're in. And I think that's what I've seen the evolution of FMA. I'm aware of these guys ended up, what they focused on on their arts, to share their arts and make it self-defense. They teach mm -hmm. their arts and their people will survive an attack. Mm -hmm. So, you know, analyzing my late grandmaster, Angel Cabalas, look <clears throat> at what he went through, the fights he got in, you know, in the Philippines, the fights he got in in Alaska, and then what he really chiseled down, let's say, his last 10 years of his life, on the kind of knowledge he wanted to pass to his last students. Mm -hmm. And uh, to witness that, you know, I feel very honored and privileged because we're looking at a man that left the Philippines barely 20 years old. Mm -hmm. And then he came here and had to live in a area supposed to be the land of milk and honey, man. There was signs of no dogs, no cats, no Filipinos, mm -hmm. dealing with prejudice, you know, what was going on, you know, in that time here in America, here in Stockton, mm -hmm. and to see how he evolved, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think as I get older, I look at that perspective more and more about mm -hmm. my teacher, what he went through, mm -hmm. and what was going through his mind on how he wanted to really fine-tune his art to pass on his knowledge. And, uh, you know, it's a beautiful thing. I wish Angel wouldn't live to be 100 years old. I really do. But if he did, you know, he passed away at 72. Mm -hmm. So the guys I came up with, you know, Master Jerry, Master James, Sultan Dean, these are guys that I chisel myself training with. And then what, where it took me as a teacher to pass on my knowledge. But, you know, you always got to give credit to them guys, man, from the beginning. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Really give credit to them guys. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I give it to them. You got to. You got to in that range. And and going back to, and, and on that topic too, and Professor James, your, your style now, I told, I think it was you, Darren, I was saying, Remind me never to volunteer for anything with Professor Hunden. Well, I see no demonstrations. No, I pass. You know, but 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 the style that you trained and you oh, had it on the show. No, no, no demonstrations. I know that. I know that you grab my finger. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no demonstrations for peace stock. No, 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 no. You know, but uh, no, but I mean. It's just interesting, you know, with, with the locks, you know, and your style that you develop your own system. And I remember you talked about it, having that system and that style for like close combat. Like if you're touched down and you're sitting in a, at the Grammys and, and Will Smith, that's the Oscars of Will Smith, smack him, and you got to, that's right, Chris Rock, and you got to get him under control. You know, but uh, <laughs> no, but uh, you know what I mean. So yes, I mean, yes. that's interesting how you evolved and developed that style over everything you did in, in your history of studying, and that's what you you uh, put together as, as as a system. Well, I what what happened being um, being a part of the early competition right after uh, uh, the the Bruce Lee era. Right. And and you started competing and and uh, seeing what was going. Everything was about pretty much kick and punch, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, when when Grandmaster Jay came out with uh, uh, a dynamic uh, small a small circle and talking about uh, finger locking, 
it was, uh, I mean, it was pretty much unheard of. Uh, like you, everyone had a little bit of wrist locking, you know, some type of wrist lock throw and you have judo and, you know, and, and, you know, jujitsu, but small, you know, Grandmaster Jay in the small circle, jujitsu was just, just something that was, it was beautiful to watch, but you start to wonder how in the world is that beginning to happen? Mm -hmm. You know, how does, how does he do that? So, you know, uh, when I finally connected with, uh, with Grandmaster Jay, I was just at that point. I think I had mentioned once before yeah. I had gotten to a place in competition where, okay, uh, the kick is the kick, the punch is the punch. And you know, you're learning all that, but what happens when you're in that tuxedo? What happens when you are dressed, you're at that, five course dinner you're out uh at the grammys or whatever and you're leaving and something crazy happened you don't you don't want to be waddling in the street or whatever and, and that's what i'm i really appreciate what i got from grandmaster jay but also the other teachers that i started to look at and became part of my search i mean I, you have two of my main teachers right there you know, and I've, I've been in the arts for a minute, but uh, 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 Sifu Harinda Singh, that's my JKD instructor, you know. Mm -hmm. And then we have Darren Tabalum, that's my knock you in the head and bring bruises and, <laughs> and you know, breaking joints. Yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. then, to, then to, to, be, to be able to feel a part of that from what I feel from Grandmaster Jay and start to tie that in together my approach, how I look at it, uh, it it just became a beautiful thing on top of me going to New York um, for, for eight years and being with Grandmaster Powell and all the, you know, and, and that whole family. I, mm -hmm. I, I think the biggest, one of the biggest things I, I see now is that a lot of the martial arts right now don't know the, who the John the Timidads the Tibidads were. Uh, some of them may not have known uh, who uh, Steve Mohammed was. I mean, I got a chance to witness and see all those guys fight in my early days. And I, I tell you, Steve Mohammed was just off the chain. And he, you got a chance to see him fight. I mean, this is where all the instructors used to fight. You know, the Bong Yu's and, and the... the uh, uh, Sifu Bill Owens, John, and I, uh, John the Tibidads, and Monster Man Everett Eddy, and, and all these guys back there, you, you know, you say, well, who's that? And people are like, I, I don't know, I ain't never heard. But that, those were the real cats that was putting it down. And to be able to understand where it came from, because you can go now and you can go to a place they, they specialize in four or five different four, five, six different arts, and they're putting it together. And it's a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. But looking at the early pioneers that did that sacrifice, they're part of where it is right now, although they may not be around anymore. And right. I think I think the biggest biggest part is a lot of these a lot of these people that that excuse me that are training and, and they're seeking all this other knowledge. Uh, I think that's a part of a small level of disrespect, not knowing the history of, of things that they're looking, that they're, that they're doing, and maybe not knowing that a, one particular person may have a major influence on one of the bigger things that they may be doing now. Mm -hmm. You know, so, but... Uh, yeah, I just absolutely went crazy after I started doing the finger locks and then, you know, experiencing uh, Dr. Moses Powell and that group in New York and that East Coast flavor, you know, and then looking for the JKD and I, I'm with, with Sifu. And, and I mean, it was just, you know, so, I mean, I enjoy, I enjoy, uh, I'm, I'm like a kid still in a candy store. You know, it's <laughs> like when I first met uh Messenger Preciado and and uh, Darren told me he it was. I was just in a, like, 
wow, really? <laughs> you know, when I hear the history of all of that back then, I was like, wow, man. And I think during that time, I was on the East Coast. You know, I I didn't know it was, you know, what Serata was. And also hearing, like, uh, excuse me, like Darren was saying, you have all these other Filipino martial arts. I remember when I started uh, in the Filipino martial arts and someone told me about Serata, uh, a lot of people didn't want to talk about it. They says, oh, well, nobody really does that or nobody really mm -hmm. does this. And that. And then you start getting into it and you start seeing some of the baddest dudes out there or the cats that's doing Serata. So, <laughs> so it's like, okay, I, that's how I looked at Capoeira the same way. You have Capoeira heads you now, you have Capoeira Angola. You start hearing about Capoeira and Angola, say, well, what's Angola? Well, don't worry about the Angola. That's for old men. Yeah. You're gonna do the head, you're gonna do the head you now. You're gonna do, but then you start to find out that uh the Angola is basically the real deal. That's the street, that's the real street street stuff, you mm -hmm. know. So it's like oh, okay, but sometimes it's about how much of the roots was associated where, you know, where they looked at it like, okay, we're going to take that, but we're going to push this over here. Um, and Angolan, I, you know, I I started messing around with Angolan going, oh, yeah, that's the sneaky Malindra stuff right there. You know, what I mean? <laughs> that's, that's the part where you say, oh, okay, you know, you have your hand around the cat's shoulder and you're telling me, hey, how you doing? And he's going, oh, he's okay, but he doesn't see the razor in your hand. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so um, yeah, so, um, uh, yeah, the finger locking and putting all this other stuff into it, you know, insane dance of pain is what I call it. Uh, uh, Heard I mean, you call it that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I call it. That's what my that's what my video series is. And then no matter what I end up adding to it, it's still going to be the insane dance of pain. Because we do start dancing and there's a lot of pain applied, you know? <laughs> Those locks hurt. You can tell. <laughs> you can tell. You get one of them locks, boy, you better not even resist. You better start telling on your mama. Yeah. <laughs> she over there. <laughs> you know, one of those moves. She right over there. Yeah. You know. But yeah, I, I, I've, I've seen it and I've witnessed it and and yeah, I, I can really, really see the need, and, and I've been looking at that as well. So it's great, you know, uh, what, what what all you guys bring to the table, and everything, and, and your style, and like with uh, Master Jerry Preciado, and, and Derek the Bond with Angel, you know, me and Salt Nadine used to sit back for hours, Grandmaster Salt Nadine, to talk about the history. He, I mean, he knows the history he goes to. Blah, 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 blah. He knows because he did all the stuff. You know, he went to the Philippines. You know, he 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 did. You know, he did that. You know, and uh, he traveled the world. You know, he studied that. And some of the stuff I think Tasso Allo said on the show, one of our early episodes, that the Capoeira he did at the opening scene of uh, the uh, uh, a Mortal Kombat series was like incredible, you know, which was all him. And we was talking about that, how he did all that stuff, you know, but like you said, studying, traveling the world, studying everything and taking every little bit. And that's why I think martial arts and hip hop goes so well together. You know, I had to squeeze that in there because yeah. hip hop, you know, it's like martial arts where you take a little bit of everything and make it your own. Mush it up and make it your own. Yeah. A beautiful own. journey. Beautiful, a beautiful journey. journey. That's what it is. Well, you know, when you take a look at it, though, right? Martial art is rhythm and poetry in motion. You yes. Know? Yes. Yes. Well, while somebody else is trying to disrupt it, and so you know, it's the, it's all about that flow. And you know, I think for me, hip hop has always been a big influence growing up. But the the similarity is there. Of, it's about creation, right? And as mm -hmm. Professor Hunden was saying earlier. You know, one of the things I appreciate about him is that his, his his desire to learn is intoxicating. 
Do you know what I'm saying? It's just, and it rubs off on you. And, and if we, if, we, if you can get something that does that for you, it's, it's quite phenomenal. I still remember when he came to me and he, and he was telling me about Grandmaster Darren Tabone. He's like, yo, man, no, you got to see these cats. You got to see them move. He's like, see, Bo, come on, man, let's go, let's go. And, was, and you know, I trust him. I said, all right, let's go. And so we, we went and that was at your, when you were inducted into to the Hall of Fame in 2014, and then the next day, I, I saw uh, Grandmaster Darren Tabone with his son and uh, his team, and and I just I didn't need to see more than thirty seconds, you know, because you I mean not even that it's body mechanics don't lie when you watch somebody move you you, you know right and that's that's the difference it's the beautiful just like if you listen to somebody flow you know right yeah. you know you can you can see if somebody steps up and the way they grab the mic you know the 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 presence you know the way they command timing the way they command space the way they command the interaction with the audience i mean those things transfer directly over right it's time timing it's angles it's distance it's that interaction with the opponent and then when you take a look at the other part of it about being a teacher a teacher is a presentation being a teacher you're presenting to the audience you're sharing your art to the audience that's art in itself teaching is an art form in itself because when you got a crowd and if you got like, you know, one of the things about the legacy events is beautiful, but you really have to be able to um, get your point across quickly. But not only that, you have a short opportunity to light a spark um, for, the, <coughs> for the teachers and stuff, people who are whoever's there attending your session. And I mean, that that's an art form in itself. And and like Grandmaster Darren Tabone said earlier, it's it's the best feeling in the world. I love to teach because it's my favorite feeling in the world because of the interaction with the students. Because every time I teach, I actually grow watching them and from their questions helps me grow. But the best feedback you can get in a loop is when you see the smile, when you see the, oh, oh, you mean I need to do this instead of this? That's it. And the, the appreciation. And I mean, that's why we all really do it, right? And so... Yeah. And it keeps us young. Look at these guys, man. I was like, what are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? They're like, Kung Fu, they do uh, Sarada, they do martial arts. I'm like, okay, shit. That's the formula then, man. That's the ticket right there. You keep growing, keep training, you're going to stay young. And that's the truth of it, right? Like, you stop growing and like a river, you put a dam in a river, it stops moving, it gets stale, everything in there dies. Real and Angel would say, you know, as Angel got older and he'd still want to show that he still had the strength. So he would either, you know, and I had to say it, but he, he'd pick on Darren because Darren was one of the bigger guys, you know. And he'd say, see, see, I'm, still, I'm still strong. You know, I'm a strong, I'm still strong. See, see? <laughs> While he's trying to put you on the ground, you know, you have your arm twisted back there and up in the air. And you know, you had so much pain that you had to go down on the ground. But he, it was a pleasure for him to show that he still had the strength to put somebody on the ground without a problem. <laughs> and that's why I, I learned the hand on hand technique so well. Because he loved demoing with me. He really did. Right. Yeah. And that and that's the other beautiful part about it too, is that when you have that relationship with the teacher, it's an osmosis. They they transfer to you, right? There's a transfer yes. technology yes. happening between teacher and student. Yeah. Yes. And that's that's priceless, right? Like yes. when a teacher yeah. touches hands with you or sticks with you, every moment, every opportunity you get is beautiful because they're transferring knowledge through to you you know you could see something you could read about it you could watch a video but when they actually do it to you that that's i learned by getting getting it done on me right and like you know please see if grandmaster or teacher all my teachers do, do to me please and they're like are you sure <laughs> yeah <laughs> Just me but do it to me please first and you know mm -hmm. and but i think it's such a it's a beautiful thing right because um martial arts really gives us access to the truth the yes. truth about ourselves of who we really are you can't hide you can't call a friend you can't pretend this is a uh, practical method of really discovering how you deal with an external stress force being placed upon you and mm -hmm. can you relax under pressure can you stay calm cool and collect because anybody could do it in a zen garden we could all go do it in a zen garden we could all go under a tree and do it that's tough too i'm not going to say that's not tough but that's part of the training method to then can we find that state when 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 the chaos is turned up can we find that state when the pressure is on us and chaos. Having, chaos and having great teachers that take you into chaos 
in a progressive way without breaking you but pushing you that that goes in everything in life so if somebody says something to you outside or you're dealing with difficulties you're dealing with a job or a do- or a boss or bills or the pandemic right whatever is happening you're like oh it's all good no problem you're not going to react to those things you'll respond and there's a big difference right because most people in the, in the world when something happens they go and then they react from a reactive pattern that's been installed in them they don't mm-hmm. have the ability to go time out pause take a breath and uh, I think I'm going to do this instead. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's huge. That's huge. That's huge in the arts, man. So, so that's great. And the Legacy Nine, and this is 2023, going into 2023. So, I want to hear from everybody on the panel what's their goals and agendas for 2023. Uh, let's start with you, Professor Honda. <laughs> Wow, 2023. Well, to keep getting better. I'm getting I'm getting younger, so I want to mm-hmm. keep getting better. Okay. I'll be uh this coming November, I'll be 75. So this book is still open. I keep learning. You know, yeah. there's so much there's so much out there to learn. So I I I, I don't I don't have enough yet, you know. So I want to keep growing. Mm-hmm. You know, I gotta get down there and see Sifu and spend some time with him. Let him jack me up a little bit, you know, and and uh, you know, and and keep it going, and and uh, you know, spend time with my my teachers, you know, I because I know where I want to go now, you know. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it takes a minute that you're searching on the path to go. I know where I want to go, mm-hmm. and so doing that, so, you know, you have to travel sometime for knowledge. Yes. You no, know, you have to go get it. It don't just come to you you have to travel and if you really love it that's what you will do you know you Mm -hmm. set up the time time permit and you go boom even if you say well i'm here for a day you do that day well i can come back again in a few months you do that few months but you come back if you want it and you understand the value of it you go get it you know so that's uh, what i'm looking at for 2023 and perfecting more of my music of course (laughs) <laughs> there it is. Hey, where can people catch you through uh, uh, performing this year? Let people know. Give them a shout. Okay, I'll I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll I'll get more in touch with you and let you know what's going on. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Let people know. They might want to get out there in the area and see you and let you put a lock on them. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> Let's see. That's a music venture. See if it goes to the lock side of it, something happens. Something went wrong. You know, something right? happens. Something, something went wrong. wrong. That means they're not enjoying themselves. You know. <laughs> something went wrong. Uh oh. Uh oh. Who got I'm trying, I'm trying to keep people smiling, and I'm trying to keep smiling. You know. <laughs> yeah, we got you. We got you. Now, how about you, Herinder? You know, what's 2023 looking like? Man, 2023 is a, a wonderful year. I think. Every year, every day is wonderful because we don't know when it's going to be our last. And so, you know, for me, growth and training is 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 always been on the agenda for myself. Um, but really, my focus this year is on empowering others to empower more people. If we can really empower teachers through martial arts to use self-defense as a self-development method, how can they bring not just the martial arts and the physical and the strategy and the tactics, but how do they get to a point where more teachers can be developed that can actually teach the philosophical and the life development skills and tactics that are there in a standardized set manner so that regardless of their style or system, they could pass those traits on. You know, for me, there's combat tactics, there's philosophy in action, you know, and how can we combine those two together so that, the people that we work with, the teachers that we work with, um, the students that we develop, that they can take those skills beyond the mats, beyond the dojo, out into the real world. Um, because the more confident people are, the less reactive people are, the better choices they make, not only in their own lives, but I truly personally believe that once we've learned who we truly are and have worked on ourselves, we can then be set ourselves up in a position for God to use us because we're here to be served. You know, we're here to serve. And, and the way to serve it is you got to sharpen your sword because the divine doesn't want to use a dull sword. 
So at the end of the day, if we can, if we could do that, and that's the real message of martial arts. It's given me everything I have. The gentlemen you see on here, I mean, they're inspirations to me and my teachers. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for them. And so I truly believe in the life transformational human potential of the martial arts. And if we can bring the self-development part of it in a more standardized way through the training, so self-development self through self-defense, um, we can help a lot of more people. Mm. That's huge. That shoe is very big. Very big. How about you, Jerry? You know, um, I, I like what they're, uh, what's being said, you know, about the, 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 the uh, joining of the, the groups. Um, and, you know, and I'm, I'm from the old school, and so I have to kind of come out and say it. You know, I, I, I'd i like to um, see some of the old uh, masters that we came up with that kind of might have, uh, well, they feel they didn't miss out on some of the some of the stuff that we actually received towards the end of the of uh, Angel's uh, uh, life and his training. Uh, I would love to see some of the uh, old masters. There's only so many of us that didn't come out and uh, show us. Uh, or they can kind of see what we can do or what we what we learned and instead of them being part of the uh, the frame of a picture they can be in the picture and um, I, I think that uh, that would be something I'd look forward to uh, that would be to me a, a big joy before uh, we do leave this earth and because um, I'd like to see it besides them uh, having a video uh, at home and having a you know one person trained or something like this but maybe they can actually come out and uh, and join us one day mm -hmm. That's big, and Jerry, you're like the you're like the Ken Burns of uh, of uh, Angels uh, Disciples, man. You have the uh, the photos and the video stuff to back up everything, man. Uh, yes, uh, and uh, and and I held back from putting that out because it's been so many years. You know, it's, it's uh, it was training, uh, you know, with uh, us as masters, the masters that came up under Angel, the footage of all that. Um, we exceeded that. We're we're beyond that now. Um, a lot of the, the the you know those videos of Darren training. These are a bit of Sutan training, uh, Wade Williams training, Frank training. There, everybody is as training as we were as one. We were we were like a a, a good running unit, uh, and now um, there is kind of a, a, the second hands are broke off the clock, and. Um, uh, mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if they feel that they're they're better than the the people they came up and trained with, and they want to stand out, or if there's something that would cause them to to run off and create their own styles. But um, it would be a it would be a joy to see them back. I'm, I didn't want to plan on putting the video footage out because <laughs> some of it would be kind of funny videos compared to what uh, what they're capable of doing now. Mm -hmm. mm. <clears throat> That's big. I got you. I got you. You know, or you could do something for them personally, you know, a take yeah. back, you know, and, and, you know, stuff like that, instead of holding on to it now in memorial of, you know, in memoriam of, you know, after the fact, you know, let it out and let it be seen. But it's it's great, you know, and, and of course, Grandmaster Dan T. Bond, how, how, what does 2023 look like for you, sir? I know it's uh, a lot I think going it's, on. Uh, I think it's going to be fantastic. It's already been fantastic, okay? But I'm going to continue to uh, create opportunities and share. And hopefully all my students continue to grow. And that's that's big on my, on my list right there. Mm -hmm. Positive growth, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And future legacies. You know, I get more SMA out there, you know, uh, mm -hmm. a board, the legacy, and continue to share this legacy. But at the same time, you know, continue to work on my chapters, my affiliates, and uh, make sure they continue to grow you know, mm -hmm. work with you. And I, I really want to do that this year. Matter of fact, today was one of my biggest classes I've had probably three months and we all got together and it was great seeing them all you know, and then see my grandson grow mm -hmm. uh, some of my other kids grow they're all tall men now he's taller you know my grandson's mm -hmm. only 13 but oh man he's got up and I uh, want to see him grow of course but to watch his training partners he came up with you know 
the local brothers, you know, some of the newer uh, students uh, growing, you know, uh, mm -hmm. that's what, where I really find the joy, to watch the students grow. And uh, I want to see all my people grow mm -hmm. with quality, you know, and uh, I think this year is going to be bad. I really do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's big, you know, and, and, and that's what we like, you know, and we're going to be back, you know, take a good look. These gentlemen will be back on time for time, you know, look for uh, them on I hip hop even coming up, you know, that that's coming up, you know, so get some things going, you know, so this is the thing that uh, the martial arts, you know, it's a pleasure having all you guys on here talking to you guys all the time, you know, it's all always insightful, enlightening. You know, and, and and just you know, very informative. You know, always always leaving the viewers with something, you know, that that that, that makes them want to come back. Like you said, that want to learn more. We like that. That's what we want to strive for to get people. And we're going to send as many people your way as we can. You know, that's our thing. We're going to follow you. Got to check out James Hunter. He, he he get a hold of them. He lock you. You're done. You know, you get locked up, you go check out here with your son, you go check him out. You know, he get he gets down, you know, everybody. So we like that. Spread it out, get the balance, and introduce, especially younger minds, younger people that that will develop and grow along and hopefully, you know, become faithful students. That's what we try. That's what we try. All right. Hey, brothers. All right. Hey, uh, All right. See you later. All right. Take care. Take <laughs> care. All right. Thank you, Harry. Good to see you. Great All right, Sifu. Good to see you. All right. Great to see you, Master Jerry. GM to All right. All right. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. how we do it you know this has been another great address to culture smash the like button subscribe leave comments below fma legacy you know angels disciples stockton you know chapter you know big grandmaster darren to bond and the crew that's how we do it big shout out to Aladdin 19 putting it all together making it happen big shout out to all our followers, our subscribers, all the FMA people, you know, and keep us locked. Stay tuned, you know, and and, and just keep us a, a sign up and hit that alert button. So when they drop, you will know you won't miss it, you know, but definitely, you know, make sure this is addressed to culture, you know, make sure that, you know, your culture is, is a part of you and what you have and make sure people respect it. And that's what we're here to do, address the culture. I'm your man, Peace Stop.